Hi there, and welcome to my plasma cutter torch head video. There seems to be no information on the internet on this subject, so I decided to produce my own information. We'll start out with the commercial plasma cutter torch head, which is shown right here. And it uses the consumables, consumables that are listed here. And the front of a typical commercial plasma cutter looks like this. And inside you can see the actual wires which are connecting the commercial plasma cutter to the torch head. Here's a picture of a typical Chinese plasma cutter torch head. Notice that this torch head is also a pilot arc torch head. The Chinese plasma cutters normally have an extra terminal on the front panel of the plasma cutter as shown here. And the torch head cable end will look much like this with the extra wire for the pilot arc. Here's a detailed description of how the plasma actually works. Basically you're setting the air on fire with the high voltage uh, ionization of the air. That turns it to a fourth state which is called plasma. This plasma is super hot and it blasts through any conductive material and cuts it quite easily. So what's the difference between a pilot arc and a non-pilot arc torch head. On this picture on the left side is a non-pilot arc torch head and on the right is a pilot arc torch head. Notice the terminal on the pilot arc torch head. The difference is when you use it. With the non-pilot arc torch head you can actually touch the surface with the cup of the torch head to start the arc. With the pilot arc torch head you simply stay close to the surface and you ignite the pilot arc. Then as you bring the torch head closer to the metal, then the main current starts flowing the main plasma current, which cuts through the metal. The pilot arc torch head allows you to cut through paint and blemishes and dirt and rust on the surface as long as you have a good ground on that piece of metal. Whereas the non-pilot arc has to actually strike a contact with the surface of the metal you're trying to cut before the primary plasma current can be established. Here's a picture of both torch heads and the pilot arc torch head has the plastic cut away so you can see what's going on inside. If you look closely you will notice that the outer ring where the uh, cup screws into the brass fitting that has the pilot arc wire soldered to it. There's a white insulator and then to the left of that you'll see the pipe feeding the air up into the anode portion which is the center part. So the anode portion is insulated from the outer ring by this white material and that brown looking stuff is simply glue. They use it to glue the insulator in place. Both the non-pilot arc and the pilot arc guns have the same head set up here. The ring on the right hand side is insulated from the center anode which is on the left hand side. The only difference is there's no wire attached to the non-pilot head. So there's no place to attach the pilot arc signal wire to make the arc take place at the tip. This is the Chinese torch head with all the consumables removed. If you look closely here at the center you see there's threads. That's where the anode screws into the torch head. Just outside that ring of threads you'll find four slotted holes. These are the swirl holes. These make the air start swirling as it comes out and goes around the installed anode. Next you see the white insulator which insulates that whole center node from the outer ring. Then on the outer ring you see there's four holes. These also pass air down the cup to cool the cup to reduce the temperatures that rise in the cup. Here's a drawing of the pilot arc torch versus a non-pilot arc torch. If you notice on the pilot arc torch, it says the point of arc from the pilot arc wire, the positive signal attached to the cup, arcs back to the anode, and that's what starts the pilot plasma. The pilot plasma then blasts down here, and when it hits the workpiece, it makes electrical connection with the workpiece. So now the anode workpiece turns on the high current cutting plasma and now the high current cutting plasma finishes 
piercing through the workpiece and making your cut. With the non-pilot arc torch, things are a lot different. The cup has no electrical connection to it. It just floats. It's free in the air. So the anode can't arc to the cup until the cup touches the workpiece. Once the cup touches the workpiece, then the anode sees the cup as being positive charge from the ground clamp, and that strikes the arc and blows the cutting plasma down through the workpiece. So it works a lot differently. It's a lot simpler. The disadvantage is you have to drag the cup on the piece of metal to get it started, and it has to be clean. Other than that, they both work the same. Here's a picture I found on the internet. Notice there's an extra anode to the right-hand side, and there's also an anode installed inside the cup, and the cup is screwed over it with a cutout. You notice the gap between the end of the anode and the hole in the cup. That gap is way too big and this person was having problems. It wouldn't arc because of that gap. The pink thing above, that's simply a, a heat shield. It guides the air over the cup to cool the cup. Here's a cutaway picture of the normal spacing between the center anode and the cup. The hole is missing. I had to grind this out and I couldn't grind it very nice and clean. But the hole should be going out. We're just on the back side of the hole so you don't see the hole right now. But that gap in there is usually a, like a sixteenth of an inch. And when a pilot arc arcs, it actually arcs from the center anode to that hole in the cup. In a non-pilot arc system, the cup has to touch the metal so that the cup becomes grounded to the metal, which creates the potential between the metal and the anode, which starts the plasma stream. In either case, the main plasma stream is now started and pierces through the metal and provides the cutting action. Both systems can drag the torch on the surface of the metal once the main plasma arc is started. But this also shortens the um, life expectancy of your consumables. Both systems can be lifted off the metal once the plasma stream is started as long as you don't exceed the plasma stream's ability to stay electrically connected to the surface. So by lifting both of the tips, you will extend your the life of your consumables. Here's a picture of a commercial torch head which has a micro switch. The anode pin actually gets compressed when you screw on this gray outer cup. That pushes the pin back, closes the micro switch, and enables the machine. Notice in this case the anode is the black wire it's tied to the end of the anode plunger. So this is a safety feature, so you can't try to turn it on when the cups aren't in place. So this concludes how both torch heads work. Hopefully this video will help you understand when you're having issues with your torch. And uh, the more you use it, the more skilled you become at using it. There's plenty of other videos on the internet about how to use it. I just want to make sure everyone understood what's going on inside the torch head so that you can troubleshoot that aspect of it. One person, in fact, found a loose hose inside the torch head, which was losing air pressure, which made the thing not work at all. Plasma cutters won't work unless they have air pressure to create that plasma stream of air. Loose connections can always be a problem, too. Loose electrical connection problems. So hopefully this helped you fault isolate and get your system working again.